DefenseOne.com reports that there's been a breakthrough in brain hacking. They call it a checkered history. As they point out, the military has been looking to build better brain hacks for decades with results that have ranged from the frightening to the comical. Well, there's not a whole lot to laugh about with this. Uh, one of the things that they're talking about here, and it's not really so much the technology that's important. I think it's really the ethics and their goals of what they're trying to accomplish. But here's what they say about this breakthrough. They say scientists funded by the Defense Department have just announced a breakthrough that could allow researchers to create in 220 days an extremely detailed picture of the brain that previously would have taken 80 years of scans to complete. So they can do it in 220 days what they previously would have taken 80 years to complete. Now, of course, that's being funded by the Defense Department. These people are telling us with a straight face that this is strictly for helping people with Alzheimer's or people who have traumatic brain disorders. And they're also telling us that their brain research is going to help veterans with PTSD because they're going to be able to go in and selectively remove memories or implant memories. And, of course, part of that prog program it's Obama's Brain Initiative, a multi-billion dollar program. DARPA's got a huge chunk of that. And they're talking about their program, Restoring Active Memory. Look at that acronym, RAM. Does that sound familiar? If you know anything about a computer, it does. RAM is the computer's memory. So basically, they're, they look at you as essentially a computer that they can hack. That's why they're talking about brain hacking. That's why they're talking about their RAM program. You should be very concerned if they were genuinely concerned about medical issues. And of course, that's not at all what the Defense Department and DARPA are focused on. They're about creating war machines, okay? They're not about doing medical research. If they had any real concern about the veterans, they would be doing something for them in just ordinary care at the VA. So you should be very skeptical of anything that they tell you. If they do come up with a treatment, will they make it available to the vets? I seriously doubt it. They're always saying they're gonna do that. We should remember the history of what they did to World War II veterans with PTSD. They gave them lobotomies. So this kind of rings hollow. And of course, they're being joined by Lawrence Livermore National Labs. They have, get this, high fidelity neural recordings. They're trying to do everything they can to map and to record your memory. It's not enough for them to record all of our metadata, not enough for them to record all of our phone conversations, as the former head of the NSA said. He said they want total population control. That's how you do it with these brain projects. So if you're approached by somebody for some research, think twice about that. We need to try to cut this kind of funding off or this kind of dangerous research. But look at the other side of this. There's also, of course, a race for artificial intelligence. This article from Wired Magazine points out that Microsoft is jumping into this to try to race Google to see who can create the first artificial brain. And of course, it's not just Google and Microsoft, it's also Apple and even Facebook, these are the people who are trying to get in and create artificial intelligence, what they call deep learning. In other words, trying to make cognitive sense out of multiple inputs, speech, vision, text, all at the same time. So that's where we're headed. They're trying to control that. Who do you think is going to control the artificial intelligence? Well, it's the same people who are seeking to control all aspects of the population.